The drawings have such deep meaning, and they express so much uh, symbolically, which is a which was a new way of uh, a new way of communicating for me. When I, I was used to working with quantities and logic and formulas, whereas working with the alchemical materials, you have to be intuitive. You have to meditate a little bit on. You have to slow down your thought processes instead of speeding them up and absorb the meaning here by the qualities they're trying to express. This drawing I found in Azov of the Philosophers, it's, uh, the original print was just black and white uh, in bad condition, I've restored it. What we do with this, it's, it's a mandala. So you focus your attention here at the center of the mandala and you work with all these uh, symbols around it and you try to get all these symbols come together in one meaning or one message. And it's easier to do that, I've found, in meditation. If you put it in bright colors, each color having a meaning uh, in alchemy, you're able to close your eyes and have what's called an eidetic image, or an image that's persistent because of, because of the brightness of the colors. And, uh, and you actually meditate on that closed eye vision. And that seemed to work better. But a lot of people have this, uh, since I've been writing about it, have this drawing in their, in their homes. Sometimes they'll put a mirror here uh, and meditate on their own face in this drawing. But what, what you see here is the face of the alchemist with this symbol of um, divine grace coming down. That's a symbol for water also, but it's also the symbol for divine grace or divine energy coming down to the planet. So what you see in the center of that triangle is the face of God. And that idea that the face of God and the face of the alchemist could be one and the same, that we could perfect ourselves to that height, uh, became, of course, something that kept secret from the church at the time. It wouldn't have been accepted, but that was the meaning there. And all these operations, which it couldn't be easier, I mean, it's, they're numbered, one, two, three, through seven, these are the operations of alchemy that, that you go through. Calcination is working with fire. Dissolution, working with water. Uh, separation, which we talked about in, in, uh, in the lab and worked with in the lab, is, is separating the essences uh, to make sure you just got the essences, that, uh, usually the masculine and feminine uh, powers, positive and negative, and then you bring them back together in this new birth, um, and then you uh, take that material and repurify it on a whole new level. So this is a turning point. These are the operations below and, uh, and the working with the crude matter. These are the operations above working with the purified matter. So the next operation here is fermentation where new growth is added to the, to the material that you're working with. It takes on a new life and um, the birth of that life comes through through the essence that you get through the operation of distillation. Um, here, the two birds nesting is about this birth. Uh, in fermentation, a good way to think of it is like making wine. You let the rye, wine uh, rot, the grapes rot, and the essence of the grapes becomes the spirit of wine. And that's the fermentation process. And here, the symbol for uh, this operation uh, was the unicorn. Basically, it's saying you can distill yourself, you can distill your own energies, uh, uh, and they're talking sexual energies here. So you bring the sexual energies, as in Eastern uh, work, tantric alchemy and other things like that, up to the head, and that's what this single uh, horn at the head means. It's, it's sublimated energy, it's distilled energy. And the legend here is that only virgins can approach uh, the unicorn. So there's a lot in the myth, too, that elaborates on these operations. And the final operation is resurrection, where an androgynous figure comes, comes out, a hermaphrodite sometimes, meaning that the masculine and feminine sides of you have been brought together. This uh, drawing is another one I found in the uh, archives at the University of Vienna that inspired me to do the work. In fact, this is called Tabula Smaragdina, which is Latin for Emerald Tablet. Uh, which was a very important document, which I devoted a lot of my life and time to uh, to finding uh, historically uh, sources for the Emerald Tablet, and 
its, uh, its writings and how they were interpreted. But basically, it's taking the message of that short document, that 13-paragraph uh, document, and putting it in visual forms. And uh, the tablet says, as above, so below. So that's the first thing you notice about this, is that uh, it's, it's a distinct area above and a distinct area below. And the differences here uh, have all been, are all discussed in, in the Emerald Tablet. This section here is actually a projection of the work uh, into the into our reality, so there's a third axis here in this drawing actually. So it's it's an amazing compilation of energies um, that uh, the more you meditate on this, the more it becomes alive in you. This this center part again is like a mandala, and you focus your attention here. At the center is Mercury, which is the transformative. Uh, possibility within us, uh, our intellect, and also the uh, every metal, every uh, material thing has its own mercury in it that causes its uh, transformation. So that's projecting out into this area. It's called the Philosopher's Stone. And um, when you integrate that with the above and below is when that becomes activated within you. The five birds of alchemy, uh, the crow, the goose or swan, and the rooster, um, the uh, pelican of distillation, and here the phoenix uh, rising from the flames, the ashes at, at the end of the work. Um, here is the, the, the stars separating the above and the below, and we see here the clouds of unknowing, um, and we see two opposite sections, the masculine and the feminine. Logic, um, uh, aggressiveness, and uh, passiveness, but intuition too, and feelings. So that is not only in nature, but it's within our own psyche too. We have these masculine and feminine parts uh, that we have to bring together in order to break these chains of unknowing and be able to enter where the alchemist is at, bring these two parts together to become the alchemist and able to travel in all realms, above and below. The feminine chain to the, the dark side or the uh, unconscious uh, artistic impulses, you could call it, that connected to nature. Um, having her deep connection to um, the uh, unexpressed or lunar energies. And the man or the masculine consciousness logically charging forth into the world, the solar um, presence um, in the world, and both of them live in their own world. So it, it's about bringing those together, and these these trees all represent uh, different operations in alchemy in order to accomplish that. So once 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 that first step of the work below, the purification and unifying of the opposites um, occurs, then we can travel to the above and activate this stone or activate this within the experiment or within our own psychology or within our own soul, this secondary process that's on a whole different dimension coming out this way and working through us, uh, through the combination of nature. So you've got, um, in the above, you've got uh, the uh, three principles of alchemy called the triad. Here it's shown as a, a father, a son, and holy ghost. Uh, but it's in alchemy, it's sulfur, mercury, and salt. And those are the three principles that are present and you, that you try to release in the work. And these cherubs or uh, angels, are, there's 22 processes going on here, uh, are archetypes, uh, archetypal energies above. Not only is there energy above and matter below, but there is something else going on in the universe called the hidden sun or the black sun or the sun behind the sun. So this is initiated teachings uh, about this process, that there is something in nature behind it all, that there is something outside the universe that is projecting the idea that this is all taking place, but there's still something beyond that, beyond the universe. And um, that idea is not necessarily God, what we think of it, would be the divine idea, but it's something like the one mind that's described in the Emerald Tablet.